This is our 1986 Winnebago Lachero. Uh, originally came with a uh, 2.1 uh, turbo diesel, um, about 75 horsepower. But when we got it, the uh, the engine uh, was blown, and um, pretty much it was rust-free, very clean on the inside. And we saw an opportunity to kind of uh, restore it and make it our own. Uh, this is the um, model, I believe it's a WR220RD, which is for rear dinette. And uh, we'll give you a little tour of the inside here. So the cool thing about these uh, older RVs is that they present an opportunity to, uh, to restore them, uh, but also uh, customize, I guess, to make them your own. You know... Today's RVs are, are going anywhere from, I don't know, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000, which is kind of crazy in my book. Uh, and you can find used RVs like these. Uh, the Lachero model was made, I don't know, 85 to 1992. And many are in need of new motors and other mechanical aspects. You can't find parts for some of the mechanical aspects. So for us, it was, I guess, a wise investment if you got some mechanical abilities. And uh, we converted this, repowered it. Most folks do a, a new rear-wheel drive, I'm sorry, front-wheel drive motor. And for us, we, uh, we converted it to rear-wheel drive. But let me just give you some uh, look at our uh, interior here. Um, some of the things that we did are a little bit different. Uh, we put um, an air conditioning unit uh, in the back that goes out the rear and instead of putting a roof model that's a 5000 BTU we're gonna upgrade to 8000 because it just this just barely has enough to keep us cool in here in the summer uh, we changed out the table a little bit we like a smaller table it gives us better access to get in and out um, a few of the things of course got a TV mount uh, in the back it allows us to watch TV while we're eating and um, <clears throat> put in a microwave, um, additional power lines to go up to it to, to power that, uh, a little thermometer, which is really kind of a simple thing to see what the temperature is inside and out. And we keep our bedding up there. We've got a, a two-inch foam uh, at the top there that allows us to uh, put it on our bed to make it more comfortable. And let me see... Um, I think we've changed out one of the outlets back here to uh, have a USB connection. Uh, we've put in a small wall here. We wanted a little bit of separation between the cooking area and the dining area. Uh, just, I don't know, we wanted an area to hang things. And we got a little shelf that holds a coffee pot very, very nicely. And we can put our coffee cups up there when we're, you know, camped. Um, and in the back, it gives us a place to actually put... Uh, pictures and we haven't got any up there right now but um, that's just uh, a place for us to hang things this you know sticks velcro on here very very nicely and it stays um, pretty much it's a stock unit we took out the the floor um, the heater that's down there that's a, a power gas heater uh, runs off of LP but it used of course um, uh, connection that we had to sever because of the way the rear axle was set up but we've got us a catalytic heater that we really love because it's very very efficient and we break it out of course when it gets super cold if we're not plugged in we can boondock um, these Lacheros are just amazing vehicles for for how old they are when you think about it <clears throat> self-contained 20 foot long less than 5,000 pounds and you know 20 to 23 miles per gallon. Uh, of course, the stove uh, runs off of the gas. Uh, you got a sink, of course. We got a three way refrigerator, still original, runs off of gas. Uh, of course, uh, plug in as well as 12 volt while you're driving down the road. Uh, we keep this space here for extra fluids, uh, which would normally be where the heater would go. And that's just the way we decided to, uh, to, to set this up. And, of course, more space to hang things using Velcro. Uh, in the front here, the typical setup for Lachero is you you can have a bed back here in the rear. Uh, you can convert those, lay them down into a bed setup, which is about 50 inches wide. 
uh, very comfortable with the uh, uh, with or without the foam, but the foam makes it very very nice. And in the front here, the middle area makes into a bed as well, and it's just slightly smaller than 50 inches. It's it's in the order of like 40ish. I don't know the exact measurement. And my wife and I have gotten to where we actually use this middle bed area. Some people would laugh at that, but just the way we, we tend to sleep on our sides, it allows us to enjoy it as a bed, leave it in a bed mode while we're, while we're camping, and leave this in a dining mode. So if we want to get up and have some coffee or one of us wants to get up early, we can do so. One of the great features of the uh, Lacheros is... Uh, the amount of small storage space you actually have. You've got uh, space, of course, above the dining area, which can be a living area, of course. Uh, lots of area to put food. Um, and we tend to keep our groceries and such on this side next to the kitchen. And you've got the same amount of space. We cut ours down a little bit to put in the microwave. Um, lots of small storage space. Uh, for food items and in the front you have the same kind of setup we keep our kitchenware here and on the opposite side we keep uh, towels and um, our, our shower curtain and, and that kind of stuff you've got a meager closet it's not bad and we keep clothes in there and some uh, flashlight stuff and uh, blankets and the like and so it's not a bad closet to, to carry you know a good bit of uh, clothing with you and beneath the middle chairs here there's actually two drawers on both sides uh, that we tend to keep our clothing in when we're traveling and um, it's been quite nice to you know have our own like, dresser drawers down here that we can actually you know throw clothes in here and go traveling and she's got her side and I've got mine. I got my clothes, some of them still in there from my last trip. But you've got two drawers here, which is kind of cool uh, in order to uh, carry clothes and stuff like that in. Uh, of course, with these RVs, they, the Lacheros, they have a, a very creative uh, bathroom kitchen setup. Um, and you've got not only a, a bathroom that, that slides out, you pull out that lower area and you slide this out and it extends it a little bit. You can take a shower and you've got a bathroom and this is a sink area and a storage area. So let me open that up. So with that floor section removed, you can see there's a, a shower a pan here and uh, you can pull out this whole assembly that expands that shower space. So here it is expanded. Uh, you get more space to actually stand and of course the shower water uh, goes down the drain. And for our setup we've actually got a sump pump uh, that collects the gray water and uh, we catch that or when we're in boondock mode we just uh, let the gray water uh, just go out. Now the black water tank of course where the uh, toilet and the sink shares the black water tank um, that's that's obviously properly uh, disposed of. One of the things we did was we added a, an electrical outlet up here uh, because we are using this as a dining uh, uh, an area to actually uh, sleep in, I'm sorry. And we experimented with the idea of using this as a dining area. And we've got the little catch there for the table. Um, it worked, but we prefer to use this as a, a dining area. Uh, the two chairs here actually uh, turn about. Uh, we tend to only turn the passenger side around and uh, scoot it as far back towards the dash. And this one we scoot all the way forward. And that gives us the most uh, space for the bed here. And in the front, it's a five-speed uh, Ford transmission, uh, truck transmission I put in here. Um, many of the original gauge items, uh, they just wouldn't work for my purpose. And I ended up putting uh, auto meter style uh, gauges uh, in here. And we've got a speedometer that, that works off of the uh, uh, transmission, of course. And we've got a four-way cluster there. You know, that's got the... Uh, uh, fuel, temperature, uh, and electrical, and the water 
uh, temperature I mentioned. And right now we don't have air conditioning in the front at this time. It's the first year restoring. We've got different kind of controls for heat. And our intent is, of course, to have uh, air conditioning uh, set up, which comes through these top vents. And we'll work on that in the coming year here. A great feature that we added to our Lachero was to put a trunk on here. Uh, we expanded about almost 24 inches uh, off the bumper using quarter inch uh, tubular steel. There's a, a rail that goes up both sides that you can put a uh, tubular steel in. And we built it out of, of course, three quarter inch plywood and we covered it with uh, a layer of aluminum. Um, I think it's just like less than an eighth of an inch and um, covered it with aluminum to kind of protect it. I still need to do some things to it but it gives us room to kind of carry uh, a lot of extra gear. Uh, generator wood, uh, extra chairs, uh, fuels and uh, camping equipment and uh, cords. So for us it's been a, a, an answered prayer to have an additional storage area uh, to put things into. Another aspect of our Lachero is we added a, a nice hitch that's actually attached to the, um, to the tubular steel. Our plan is to actually tow a lightweight car and uh, we'll get to test that out the first part of next year. Uh, but it's uh, very heavy duty and with the type of engine we have and transmission and rear axle, uh, I don't think we're going to have a problem uh, towing a small car. So with our setup we actually uh, utilized a Crown Victoria uh, front suspension and because it was a forward uh, bolt pattern and uh, we ended up getting some Mickey Thompson slotted mags um, so that it would work uh, for this. We also got a Ford 9 inch that we had built with a true track uh, 325 gears and exhaust coming out the side here. Uh, two-piece drive shaft which I can't show you right now but uh, it works very very well which you'd find in typical trucks nowadays but the Crown Victoria front suspension was um, a challenge to put in and we had to put on a, a little bit of steel um, that we married to the original frame. I'll give you a quick picture of the engine. So it's kind of hard to see because we're running out of daylight here but this is a Cummins 3.9 uh, turbo diesel uh, it's intercooled and uh, I'll have a better picture later maybe of the uh, engine area. We had to do some soundproofing on the firewall there and um, so I'll have to show you more of the engine uh, later. But we got her to fit and uh, it runs well. So last but not least, uh, just talk a little bit about the paint job. Uh, original base color in the front we came back with uh, some roller uh, we actually use a foam roller to put on some uh, some paint and it actually looks pretty sharp nice and shiny but the camouflage pattern is actually utilizing uh, a stencil and we got some stencils from a gentleman in uh, I believe North Carolina and we stenciled uh, literally I believe it was three different colors to create this Marpat scheme and uh, we just rattle can uh, paint job quite frankly and it came out quite sharp um, and of course the, the cab of this Lachero is aluminum in the back and from the front section here forward it's actually steel so these stencils were magnetized they work very well on this section but on the aluminum side on back we had to hold the stencil down carefully in order to uh, allow the paint uh, to go on right but um, it definitely was a, a low-cost paint job, and uh, it looks pretty sharp.